Greetings and welcome to worship on this first Sunday of Lent this year. We're so glad that you're joining us, whether you're watching us online through our YouTube channel or on the local TV channel. Thank you so much for taking this time to worship with us. Just a few announcements this morning. During this season of Lent, we'll be offering actually several ways uh, for us as a community of faith to come together for worship and prayer. In addition to our normal weekly worship schedule of the recorded, uh, live stream, recorded and live stream worship services, we will be having our midweek Holden evening prayer worship as well each Wednesday. These services will be available on our YouTube channel each Wednesday morning. And we will, we will be emailing those links each week to all church members. You can also find them and all of our Lent worship information on our website at OurSaviorsBeloitWI.org backslash Lent 2021. We will also gather for a short midweek fireside prayer service outside in the church parking lot at 7 p.m. each Wednesday evening. All are welcome to join us outside around a fire or you may choose to park and stay in your vehicle and listen to um, the short service via your car radio. Um, those who wish to gather outside, we ask that you come dressed for the weather um, and that you wear a mask and we will also be practicing uh, social distancing just to be as safe as possible. More detailed information on where we will gather, where you may park can be found in the bulletin this week and on the website as well. Um, feel free to also contact the church office um, Pastor Tony or myself with any questions leading up to that. And finally, this weekend on Sunday, February 21st, we will be offering drive through Holy Communion um, from 10.15 a.m. until 12 noon. This is an open time for you to come to the church parking lot and receive communion from Pastor Tony or myself. As part of the live stream worship service, we will be blessing the communion elements and then will be distributed to those who wish to receive communion safely from their vehicles during that time. We ask that you again follow safety guidelines and wear masks, and we will be doing the same. Um, additionally, and if you're watching this through the cable channel, um, throughout the season of Lent, we will actually continue um, to include the words of institution and the blessing of the communion elements each Sunday during the live stream worship at 8.30 a.m. on Sundays. So if you were unable to come to receive communion during the open drive through time on Sunday the 21st, or if you're watching this after um, through the cable channel, you may contact the church office, um, Pastor Tony or myself, anytime to set up an appointment to receive communion again via drive through means. We're open and available to do that Monday through Friday, um, even on Sundays after worship as well, at a time that's convenient for you. We're happy to offer that whenever we are able. And with that, we enter this time of worship and the season of Lent on this Sunday. We begin with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God, hear us when we cry and draw us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. Amen. i 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. God, Heavenly Father, in the waters of the flood you saved the chosen, and in the wilderness of temptation you protected your Son from sin. Renew us in the gift of baptism. May your holy angels be with us, that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading comes from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal on earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it, 
and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. A reading from Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You are gracious and upright, O Lord. Therefore, you teach sinners in your way. You lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly your way. All your paths, O Lord, our steadfast love and faithfulness to those who keep your covenant and your testimonies. Our second reading comes from 1 Peter. Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey. When God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which is prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice from heaven said, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, you, O Christ. Christ. 
Grace to you and peace from God, our Creator, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As part of my education, I was blessed to spend six months in a learning program as a chaplain, as a, as a chaplain at Meritor Hospital in Madison. As part of that experience, we would gather as a group twice a week and discuss our experiences, both as a chaplain and in our own lives. At one particular gathering, one of the other chaplains shared some of her childhood experiences that had recently come to the surface for her. For years on end, she had been sexually abused by a close relative, and there had been nobody to listen, let alone help her. We all listened with deep sympathy as she unraveled her experiences and feelings. Most of us were dead silent not knowing what to say or do in that moment. The woman sitting next to her gave her a tight hug, sharing in her tears. Then a couple of my colleagues tried to give her some words of comfort. One said something like, I can imagine what you must have been going through. And the other added something like, I know how you must feel right now. And I remember how this young woman very courageously stood up from her seat and shouted, No, you don't know how I feel right now. You cannot imagine what I have been going through unless you have been going through the same. For me, as a student of theology, that was such a powerful and unforgettable lesson. We were being trained as chaplains, as pastors, to give help and support to people in all kinds of crises. But even now, our professional help so often remains detached and superficial because the experience that we face in the other person's life is sometimes foreign to us. The deep, dark wilderness that somebody may be in is not the same dark wilderness I may have found myself in. Honestly, we often have no clue apart from our own experiences and some study. And to suggest that we do have a clue, that we can identify with the pain and suffering of the other person, can sometimes downplay the immense traumas that they may be experiencing. It is unfair. We can sympathize, but we may not be able to empathize because we maybe have not been in that particular wilderness. For her, the wilderness that is sexual abuse and the devastating lifelong consequences. An example to the contrary is perhaps Alcoholics Anonymous. AA brings together people who all share the same problem. People openly share an introduction. I am Jim, I am an alcoholic. And a response from another is then, I am Carolyn, and I am an alcoholic, too. So when you come to an AA meeting as a first-timer, you suddenly feel that here are people you can talk to. People who listen and who really understand from the inside, with their minds and with their hearts, what you are going through. They are right alongside you, walking the wilderness, that is alcoholism. In today's reading from Mark, we are told that Jesus, immediately following his magnificent baptism, is driven into the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by Satan and dealing with wild beasts. While we don't glean much about his experience during those days from Mark, we know from the more fuller accounts in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke that this was a time of deep trial for Jesus. Luke even mentions that he doesn't eat for the entirety of his time, all the while experiencing unrelenting temptation and ridicule from the devil. For Jesus, this had to be nothing short of a dark and dismal time in his earthly life. In a way, from his time in the wilderness, Jesus becomes one of us in every way. He went through all the possible temptations that we may go through. In fact, as the gospel share in Jesus' teaching ministry, he was under heavy attack from the forces of evil, often on a daily basis. 
not just during those 40 days. Jesus can and does truly empathize with us. So friends, the message this day, this reflection, is a message of the mission of the church. Very simply, Jesus. Jesus is the mission of the church, and it is because of Jesus, it is because Jesus came to earth as fully human, because Jesus was tested himself, because Jesus suffered and died for all of us, that the church, that we, are here. It really does boggle the mind, doesn't it? Why would God, who created everything that is, and who could come into the world at any time and in any form, choose to become a human being? And why would God choose to commit to living this human life in the exact same way as the rest of us? To be born of a woman as a helpless child. To find themselves walking, living in the deep, dark wilderness, and be tempted in unimaginable ways. In other words, when God decided to save humans, it seemed fitting to do so as a human. And having found himself in human form, it follows that Jesus would also experience all that humans do, including suffering. Over my years in ministry, I've become an avid admirer of the writings of the, the Apostle Paul. And in his letter written to the Hebrews, he wrote, Unless he were to live and also die as a human does, Jesus could not overcome the death that comes to all humanity. Again, Paul reminds us that Christ did not come to help angels, but normal, everyday people like you and I. And therefore, he must be like us in every respect. Paul often uses the metaphor of a family to talk about the relationship we have with one another. Paul said that by virtue of his humanity, Jesus is also able to claim all people as his siblings. All people. Not just some. Not just those that society deems worthy. But all of us. And all of us live our lives as siblings in Christ including all of the ups and downs, all of the experiences as part of the kingdom of God, including the times when we find ourselves deep in the wilderness. And guess what? Those wilderness times are surely still part of the kingdom of God where Jesus is present yesterday, today, and always. This is God's kingdom where there are deep societal divisions that even come to pit family members and neighbors against one another. Jesus is here. This is God's kingdom where we are powerless to the forces of nature. Jesus is here. This is God's kingdom where there is an everyday battle waging for basic equality and acceptance among all people. Jesus is here. This is God's kingdom where we have felt helpless over the past year against a virus that has impacted the lives of at least 109 million people worldwide. Jesus is here. This is God's kingdom where we, God's beloved children, are often tempted and tested day after day in a world where there is suffering and that is not always kind, accepting, or forgiving. Jesus is most certainly here. Jesus embodies all these things, even in the face of temptation and suffering. God knows that life is not easy, that the world we live in is a troubled place. And in response to that reality, when the threat of violence, suffering, sadness, and desperation stares at us, we know that Jesus has been there walking with all people in the wilderness. He knows the anxiety that the threat of suffering creates, but he persisted. He was ready to go all the way to the cross, for it was his calling. And we can look to him for courage to endure whatever we must in order to remain faithful to our calling as disciples. Because Jesus was both fully human and fully God, he could, in his very nature, 
represent the people to God and God to the people. He could plead for his people to his heavenly Father and boldly declare the forgiveness of sins, even and especially to people who, in the minds of society, were beyond the reach of God's favor and mercy. This is what the journey of Lent is leading us to. By Christ's humanity and his embrace of all our challenges, we need never fear that God does not understand our experiences. Indeed, God forgives us from a place of empathy, from a place of commonality. God forgive, God's forgiveness comes to us less like that of a judge and more like that of a faithful friend who can enfold us in a hug, in a warm embrace. By overcoming suffering in his earthly life, Christ is able to help us in our own suffering. And no one could ask for a more merciful and faithful act than to accompany another in suffering. As with many, if not all of you, I too have been driven into the wilderness and have lived in times of suffering, temptation, and deep unknowing. And Jesus is the answer to that suffering. Those times when we find ourselves deep in the wilderness without any sense of a way out, or even sometimes no idea how we even ended up there. Jesus is the mission of the church. Because of Jesus' death on the cross and resurrection, we are assured that we are never alone and can go out into this troubled world sharing that unwavering, unconditional love of God with all people because Jesus was sent to earth to live as one of us, to experience the wilderness for the sake of the world, for the sake of us, for the sake of all of us. Amen.
Together with our brothers and sisters and siblings in Christ around the world, we come together to confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. In Jesus, your realm has come near to us in every place and time. Give your church throughout the world a spirit of humility and repentance. Teach us to trust always in the good news of your salvation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You have made a covenant of mercy with every living creature. Protect all the earth's creatures from destruction. Empower the work of biologists, conservationists, and science educators. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. All your paths are steadfast love and faithfulness. Direct the words and actions of leaders in our community and throughout the world that they may maintain justice for the lowly. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Even in the wilderness, you are with us. Walk alongside migrants and refugees crossing dangerous lands. Tend to those who lo whose lives feel desolate. Give healing and strength to all who suffer. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In the covenant of baptism, you claim us as beloved children. Nurture us in our baptismal identity and teach us to live within it for the sake of others. Strengthen this congregation's ministries of care and concern, especially in this time of increased isolation, transition, and uncertainty. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In baptism, you join us to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We praise you for all those who have died trusting in your faithfulness. Bring us with them to the fullness of your reign. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Lenten journey challenges us to pray, serve others, and give generously to those in need. Even as we, are, even as we worship in this way in different locations, Christ calls us through God's peace to be reconciled with those who have hurt, to those we have hurt and have hurt us. In this prayer, we ask for grace to help us in this difficult task, preparing our hearts to receive the sacrament. You are welcome to mail your offerings to the church or to make a donation via our website under the Give tab. And so we pray. Faithful God, you walk beside us in desert places, and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. Graciously grant us the peace of the Lord as we seek reconciliation and forgiveness with those we disagree. Accept our offerings as a practice that ties us into your reality among us and accompany us in this meal that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. And so now we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now we will hear a special children's message from Pastor Tony. 
Well, hello everyone. This past Wednesday, we began the season of Lent with a very special festival called Ash Wednesday. It's the reason I got this, this smudge on my forehead because it's the practice of the church that we enter into the 40 days of the Lenten season uh, with a Wednesday service in which we, we are given these ashes as a sign of, of a couple very important things. And, and I wanted to share that with you. Um, usually on, on Sunday, we don't talk much about Ash Wednesday because it happens on a Wednesday. And, and by the time we get into the first Sunday of Lent, as we are here today, um, you know, those ashes have washed off and they are long gone. But, but maybe occasionally you might see someone walking around town or even you yourself uh, may be given the opportunity to have ashes on your forehead. And, and it's good to understand why we do it. Well, whenever I, I give people ashes, there's some lines from the scriptures that, that I always share. It comes to us from Genesis chapter 3. It's the story of Adam and Eve, and, and after Adam and Eve have uh, eaten from the fruit of the tree of knowledge between good and evil fruit that they were not supposed to eat, um, they are given a punishment. And among the punishments that they are given is mortality. And so there is a line in there that we repeat on Ash Wednesday. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. And what that recognizes is that in the Genesis story, God actually forms the first human by taking dirt <laughs> and, and like a, a sculptor, putting it all together and then blowing his breath of life into the creature that he has made. And, and, and suddenly there we are. We have humans. We have Adam. We have Eve. And so now with the punishment of mortality comes this realization that you started in the dirt and you're going to end up in the dirt. And so the season of Lent and Ash Wednesday uh, is that reminder of our mortality. Um, we are not here forever. And yet there's another symbol that's given to us. And you may not quite be able to make it out on this smudge that's on my forehead. But, but the mark that we place on people is the sign of the cross. You know, you first had the cross marked on you when you were baptized. Baptism isn't just about placing water and then saying some words on, on someone's head, a little baby's head. But within the, the ritual and practice and worship, Afterwards, there is an anointing that occurs. And, and I say these words, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. And so this cross of ashes is a reminder that we are mortal, but it also is a reminder that through baptism, through Christ, through God's love, we have a destiny that is eternal and that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life for living out that. And so what Lent then becomes here today on this first Sunday in Lent and, and throughout these 40 days is an opportunity for us to practice living in that reality, that truth. We may be mortal, but we have eternal life in Jesus. And so we follow him and we know whether we have a black mark on our forehead or not, that his cross has marked us forever. And so why don't you just take a moment just with your forehead, for your, your forefinger and, and, and just make a cross on your forehead and remember that you belong to Jesus who loves you forever. Well, thank you and, and have a great rest of the day. Thank you, Pastor Tony, for that message. Now I invite you to receive the blessing. You are what God made you to be.
created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you, that you may be a blessing in the name of the Holy Trinity, of the Holy and Life-Giving Trinity. Amen. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.